sine, cosine, and tangent. A trigonomic function is a ratio between the sides of a right triangle. The three main ones are sine, cosine, and tangent. We have our right triangle ABC here. Each letter corresponds to an angle. So if we take the sine of A, the cosine of A, and the tangent of A, what would these be equal to? Well, we don't have any numbers or letters assigned to our sides. So sine is going to be, you take the opposite side. So we go from our angle and look at the opposite side. So let's write that down. And you divide it by the length of the hypotenuse, which is the longest line is across, it is opposite from the right angle. And that's going to be our ratio for sine. It's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Let's look at the cosine of A. Well, we would start from our angle A, and then instead of going opposite, as in sine, we would just go next to. So we would just look at this line right here. So we ha And we call this the adjacent line. So adjacent over our hypotenuse. To find the tangent of A, you start with the opposite again, and then divide by the adjacent. Luckily for us, someone has created an acronym to remember these, and it is written as so -ka toa so -ka toa So it would be sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, Sounds like a city? No, it sounds like a snake. Like anaconda with Sokotoa. Let's go ahead and add some values to the lengths of these sides so we can go ahead and actually evaluate sine, cosine, and tangent. So this side is going to be the square root of 3. This side will be 1, and our hypotenuse will be 2. So let's go ahead and evaluate these with some numbers. So for sine, we're going to be using so. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite from a is going to be 1. So let's write that down. And then divide that by our hypotenuse, which is 2. So sine of a is going to be 1 half. Let's look at cosine of a. Our adjacent side is the square root of 3. And then we need to find our hypotenuse, which is 2. So we're going to divide by 2. So cosine of a is the square root of 3 divided by 2. Finally, let's look at tangent. Opposite from angle a is 1 divided by the adjacent side which is the square root of 3. So tangent of a is 1 over the square root of 3, but we need to rationalize this because we don't want a radical in the denominator. So let's multiply by square root of 3 over square root of 3. And this will be equal to the square root of 3 over 3. Tangent of a is equal to square root of 3 over 3. Let's look at an example. If sine of x is equal to 3 fifths, then what is cosine of x? So let's draw a picture. Let's make this our angle x. And then we need to add links to our sides. So do we know any of the sides? Well, we can see sine of x is 3 over 5. 
we know the numerator is going to be the opposite side, and the denominator is going to be our hypotenuse, so let's add that. The opposite side is 3, and the hypotenuse is going to be 5. So sine of x would be 3 over 5, opposite over hypotenuse. So how would we find our other side? Because we obviously needed to find cosine of x because it is our adjacent side. Well, we would use the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. c is our hypotenuse, and a and b are our other side. So let's plug in the values that we know. We don't know a squared. Let's write that in pink. a squared plus we know b is equal to 3, so that would be 3 squared equal to c squared, which is 5, so 5 squared. So if we solve that, we know that a squared is going to be equal to 25 minus 9. 25 minus 9 is going to be equal to 16, and then a squared is equal to 16, so let's take the square root. So a is going to be equal to... Four. So cosine of x is going to be equal to our adjacent side, which is 4, divided by our hypotenuse, which is 5. So cosine of x is going to be 4 fifths. We didn't actually need to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this, this problem because this triangle follows a common pattern. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Other common patterns of right triangles include 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, and 7, 24, 25. So in each of these, your hypotenuse is going to be the largest line, so it would be 5, 13, 17, or 25, and these also work as ratios, because they're based off of the trigonomic functions, and each of those is just a ratio. So in another valid right triangle would be 6, 8, because this is just twice the size of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So using the trigonomic function, we can find the shape of a right triangle, but we can't find the size of a right triangle. For that, we need the actual side length. Let's look at one last example. Sine of theta is equal to the square root of 5 over 3. Cosine of theta is equal to 2 over 3. We are asked to solve for tangent theta. So we could obviously just fill in our side lengths and then solve for tangent. But there is an even easier way to set up this problem without even having to draw a picture. From Sokotoa, we know that tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. But tangent is also equal to sine over cosine. And this, of course, makes sense because if we have sine, which is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, and then we divide it by cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we'd multiply by hypotenuse over adjacent, this is going to be, the hypotenuse would cancel out, and we would be left with opposite over adjacent, which is equal to tangent. Sine is the square root of 5 divided by 3, and we're going to multiply that by the reciprocal of cosine, because we're dividing by cosine. So if we divide by 2 over 3, we're going to be multiplying by 3 over 2, and so if we cancel out our 2s, 
our final answer will be the square root of 5 over 2. So tangent theta is equal to the square root of 5 divided by 2.